everybody. Welcome back to Is It Kino, your favorite movie and TV show review podcast. I am your host, Monkey Jones, Simeon Jimmy, probably three or four other names in there too. Joined as always by Game Squid on YouTube, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm the Eggman. I'm here. We're going to talk about Al uh, Alex's favorite show. Wow, that, that's so smart. I, I got all the names right today. <laughs> yeah, you're a real egghead. You're so smart over there. Wait, so if <laughs> you're Eggy, then who's Florian? I, I'm a spy, maybe? Oh, could be. Hey, folks, today we're going to be talking about the new show streaming on Amazon, Alex Ryder, and I, I've got a, a long and rich history with this franchise, but before I go into that, Florian, had you ever heard of Alex Ryder before I told you to watch this the other day? Not once. This is absolutely the first time. Apparently there was a series of books and also a movie and now a series. Yeah. So let, is, let, this, let, is this your, your Harry Potter? Is this like the thing that you liked as a kid and now it's finally coming true as a series? You know, that, that might be a pretty good comparison. I did also, I mean, I was into Harry Potter as a kid too, but I, I think my favorite of these um, YA novel franchises probably was the Alex Ryder books. I remember specifically in middle school, I uh, they, they were like crack to me. I, I really liked the genre of a, a teenage spy and you give them all the gadgets and send them off on some mission that only a kid can do, like going undercover as, you know, a student in a private school or winning uh, like a scholarship and you, get, you have to hang out with uh, some rich uh, businessman all day. Uh, I, I thought that was a, a real nice uh, niche of, you know, teenage spy. And if I can uh, go a little bit into the history of uh, the the franchise, obviously it's very, I don't know if you would say derivative, uh, I would say inspired by the James Bond series, specifically the James Bond novels written by Ian Fleming and Florian, if you'll notice. Uh, Alex Ryder's super spy uncle, who teaches him everything he knows, is also named Ian. Huh, what a coincidence, huh? Huh. He teaches him everything? Wow. I, it's like I'm, get, I'm not getting most of this context here. It's like he, he dies in the first episode and, and, and Alex just thinks he's lame. So how did he teach him anything? How did he make him into a master spy yeah, without so Alex even knowing? You probably, I mean, it's a, there's a few throwaway lines of dialogue in the first episode about um, he, Alex is talking to his housekeeper, Jack, and, J and Jack's a, a woman, by the way, don't get confused. But uh, Jack's like, oh yeah, your uncle's a boring banker, but he takes you mountain climbing and scuba diving and blah, blah, blah. So he's been uh, subconsciously training Alex to do all these like spy-esque things things so that he would be uh, physically capable if he ever had to go into the field. And that's definitely expanded on more in the books. But uh, anyway, uh, at some point in my life, I guess I grew out of these books or just forgot that they existed. But after watching this show, I looked it up and evidently the 12th book came out literally this year. I had no idea that this fucker was still writing these things, Anthony Horowitz, the author. So I, I think I might uh, end up buying the box set and uh, reading up on all these again after watching this show. Speaking of the movie, real quick, they did, I don't know if it was like 2008 or what year it was, but they did make a movie adaptation of the first book, Stormbreaker. And even as a kid, I thought it was completely mediocre and uh, really not, uh -oh. not, not that great. And that might be have contributed to why I sort of fell off from the Alex Ryder franchise and forgot all about it. But then I, I see an ad saying, hey, there's a new Alex Ryder show on Amazon. Go check it out. And I was like, oh, shit. Holy shit. I got to check this out. Maybe maybe the, they didn't fuck it up. Maybe it'll actually be good, unlike the movie. And uh, I guess now we'll figure out if it was. Florian, what did you think of the Alex Ryder Amazon series rated PG-13? <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to hear how you like it. Well, I, to me, it's like... It's like the the least relatable thing I could possibly imagine. It's like this kid. <laughs> what, being a handsome teenager? Yeah, he's he's got... His friend gets in trouble because his phone gets taken away. I never even had a phone in school. I never even wanted to go to parties. You use a phone to go to parties and then hit on that girl. It's great. Wow, so relatable. I, I'm going to die. And then, oh, well, turns out this was 
this is nothing. The, the real problem is that there's actually a spy agency out to, to kill him and a spy agency out to enslave him. And, oh, my God. And and oh, for some reason, he has all these, these spy skills. And you say he's, he's been trained. I mean, yeah, that is that. that is the actual canon of the story. So I don't if you're going to try to argue against it, you're just wrong. But go ahead. No, I'm, I'm arguing that it's it's poorly represented because he thinks that his uncle is boring. How could you, do you if you had an uncle who, who, who took you to all these extreme sports, would you think that he's boring? If anything, you'd be like, oh, my God, he's so annoying trying to get me to do stuff. But that's not he, – he, he thinks he's boring. He wants to do more stuff. Wow, oh, good thing he's getting his wish, and here, here we go. I think it was more that his, more he, he was thinking of his uncle in terms of just being a boring banker who uh, is a – he's a hard ass when it comes to – um, consequences like when Alex gets in trouble for breaking into school to steal back his friend's phone his uncle is very much against it and grounds him his uncle also never drives above the speed limit so yeah I, I can see where a teenager would think that guy is boring even though secretly he's a international super spy well I don't know it's very bizarre that he's represented this way as as boring when he's Literally doing I mean, all teenagers always things. think of their guardians as boring, no matter how badass and cool they are. I, I mean, it, 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 it's just, I don't think it's a plot hole that a teenager is being a dickhead. Well, my mom always used to go to these, these. well, she, I guess she was working as a journalist, so she was like going to places, talking to people, doing shit, and I thought it was annoying. I didn't think it was boring. I thought <laughs> it was like, she's doing way too much. Slow down, woman. And this yeah, is know your place. Get, like. get back in the kitchen, Florian's <laughs> mom. What's what's this uh -oh. woman in the workplace bullshit? <laughs> well, I don't know. She didn't need to bring me along for that. Jeez. <laughs> She's I, trying I to culturally be, enrich your life. Yeah, secretly training me to be a, a, a to investigative be a, journalist, yeah. probably. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You yeah. could be on the front lines of the next uh, big uh, uprising and probably get a bunch of rocks thrown at you, even though you have a hat on that says press. <laughs> well, it's not going to work for me. I swung the other way. Leave me at home and alone. But, <laughs> That's where I want to be. I want to talk about the structure of this uh, season of television. It's eight episodes. Each one is like, what, 45 minutes to, to 50 minutes. And going into it, I'm thinking, okay, how are they going to fuck this one up? If I'm in charge of adapting <laughs> a series of YA novels, and there's like over 10 of them, how am I going to make that a TV show? And I, I think about the Netflix uh, series of unfortunate events uh, uh, series, oh, God. if you want to be uh, <laughs> redundant. And uh, and yeah. what they did for that was like, oh, every two episodes represents one of the books. And it's I think it's pretty poorly paced and, uh, you know, all that jazz. So I'm, I was thinking, OK, they're probably going to do the same thing for Alex Ryder. It's eight episodes in the season. So what, every every two episodes will be one book. OK, so it's just going to be fast paced mission, 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 not much with the characters. But no, they ended up doing something that I absolutely never would have thought of and ultimately something that i think is probably the smartest and best thing they could have done first of all they completely skipped over the first book which i am fine with because they already made a movie of it and it was not very good they they skipped to the second book and they expand on it to the point where the entire first season is just covering this one ya novel a book that is like 220 pages that you could probably read in five hours because it's written for fucking children. And they they expand on it. They mature it up a lot. They add a lot of uh, intrigue and, and new characters and all these things. And they, I mean, as far as adapting books into to cinema or television, I think this is one of the best I can think of. Be and it makes me think... I hope Netflix or Amazon or somebody does something similar with Harry Potter, where they'll they'll make an entire season of television based on just one book. Uh, I, I didn't think something like this would ever happen to anything that I liked, and I, I'm very impressed and happy with the final result. Man, wouldn't that be weird if they if they actually did that with Harry Potter, considering that Harry Potter is already a, a, a huge movie franchise, but then they remake the show with entirely new people? But it, it would probably fit it better because, like, 
Harry Potter has basically a stupid storyline, but what sells it is the fact that that it's the day to day of these kids. So that would actually be really interesting, I guess. Yeah, and you obviously recasting Snape after having such an iconic actor play the role, and now that he's dead. Oh no! Uh, I think fuck it, just get Daniel Radcliffe to fucking play Snape when you make this show in Holy fifteen shit. years. Why not? You know, I, uh, will that work? I, I don't <laughs> see why it all- wouldn't. Has all the life drained from this boy, and now he's a, a grumped up Snape. Oh uh, have, have you seen the like the images from his movie Guns Akimbo? He has really dark, <clears throat> deep bags under his eyes, and he, he definitely looks like a lifeless monster at this point. Oh, like, I gotta look at this. Or up. even Swiss Army Man. Oh yeah, look at that. I, I guess I've seen him in stuff lately. Yeah, wow, he really does well. I guess he looks a lot like some kind of Chelsea Pinkman character. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, I mean, obviously they're probably not going to do that, and they're probably <laughs> never going to make this series. But yeah, if they probably. do, if you have to replace Alan Rickman, I don't see why you wouldn't just throw in the old Harry Potter. <laughs> well, that would be pretty interesting. I guess he'd finally have to shave again for that role. Could be interesting. Yeah. Well, so anyways, yeah, let's talk about Alex Ryder. So start, starting actually, off, first episode, it seems like you're not too impressed with the character or the stakes. Well, I mean, I, I guess there's like glimpses of something interesting happening, but then specifically the characters I find mostly unlikable. And I guess that's probably me being weird. I can't stand these damn kids. <laughs> you like them? <laughs> yeah, uh, in the books, there's... I don't recall everything, but I, I very specifically do not remember him having like a close friend in high school who he confides in and is part of running subplots and stuff. Like, I'd say at least 70% of the stuff in this series was not in the book, and I feel like everything that they added was actually pretty good. So all of the the actual interaction be- between kids, I assume they they had to redo entirely because the book didn't focus too much on it. They they probably focused on the action. Is that right? Yeah, basically. I I feel like Alex gets involved in this secret mission to go undercover as a, a billionaire a teenager. To you know, he's the idea is that there's a, a private school in the French Alps where billionaires send their troubled teens. And, and something suspicious is going on because when these kids come home, they seem like something's a little bit off. And then their rich parents are all accidentally dying in these very suspicious and strange ways. So when uh, the – I don't know what the uh, – what, what did they call the, the MI6 of, of this uh, show? Like the oh, no idea, man. Yeah, whatever the the secret group was that Alex is now working for, they decide to have him pretend to be the son of a a, a billionaire and and go to the school and see if he can figure out what's going on. And that's really the main thrust of the plot of the book and this season. Yeah, perfect. The arrow you don't like the characters, and he goes to a school with even more unlikable teens. Great. Did Everyone's you like? Just... Did you like the teens more or less after they were lobotomized? More. <laughs> you like them better you... when they lost their personalities. Well, I mean, I guess I like them losing their personality. I guess the fact that they're <laughs> evil might might be a small problem, but I guess I could probably roll with them. Sure. Yeah, you'd probably be I... friends with the the evil teenagers at the lunch table, and you wouldn't hang out with the, the quirky kids. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad, you know. Just, if you have this show and you you're like, oh, we gotta we gotta have these kids, and they're gonna and and the stakes are gonna be high. Why is there no choice for him to join the bad guys? The bad guys just wanna kill him i guess and what what should, wouldn't it have been more interesting if there was actually a way that he could have become what, one of the, the the evil agents and then he had to actually mo- make a moral choice of not doing that <laughs> I, mean, I guess <laughs> so uh, at this little private school it's run by this uh, what i like about these james bond-esque stories and you have things like kingsman and even to a lesser extent austin powers is uh, it's always about the, you get some mega meg- maniacal i don't even know what that word is so, uh, some big powerhouse bad guy who has a grand scheme for world domination nation or terrorism or something and then you have the hero who has to go undercover and it, there's a lot of intrigue and 
mystery and he uncovers it all. And then uh, the grand plan is uh, revealed and the main character has to stop. But I think it's just classic storytelling and I really like this genre. That being said, uh, for me, James Bond itself is kind of like the Beatles where it inspired a lot of things. And personally, I find the, the things that came after it that were inspired by it to be much more enjoyable than the original. Like uh, King, the Kingsman movies, I love both of those movies a lot more than any James Bond material I've ever seen. But still, it's a, it's a great format. I love the, the spy genre and all that stuff. So m maybe that's where uh, a lot of my enjoyment came from was just seeing this all unfold. But the, the bad guy with this big old mustache... He spent his whole life worshipping Mao and Stalin and Hitler. And as soon as I heard him say that he loves the Fuhrer, I knew that I had to make you watch this because, I mean, oh, I no. thought finally a character that <laughs> Florian can relate to. He's going to love this. And yeah, this guy has this grand plot where he wants to exterminate 99% of the world's population and become the the new leader. And he, he genuinely believes that would be the best thing for mankind. When you have a plot like that, I don't think we need a moment where Alex is, uh, there's a moral ambiguity and he has to decide which road to go down. I think it's pretty clear that he's not going to side with uh, Hitler 2.0 and all of his clones. What, what are you talking about? A lot of people sided with Hitler back in the day. Jeez, the fact that you, you think Alex Ryder is going evil? to the teenage, the British teenager is going <laughs> to just fucking fall for this shit. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, he, he didn't come out right the gate with the Hitler stuff. Usually they, they, they're pretty convincing, don't you think? <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, no? Alex was specifically Damn. there undercover, so there was really no chance that he would get indoctrinated because he, he's, he's playing on a different wavelength from the rest of them. They don't even know who he is. I'm pretty sure they figured out very soon that he was a, a, a spy, didn't they? Not very soon. Well, maybe, I guess, but even then, it's, he would have been pretty useful to them as a spy if they, they managed to flip him. I mean, if that was necessary, there, too bad that they specifically <laughs> don't need him because they can just clone him, I guess. If it makes you feel better, I do think that in later books, um, especially with, and they hint at this at the end of the season, there's uh, an even more secret underground evil terrorist organization called Scorpia, and I, I do think that uh, the plot of later books is that Alex might be tempted to join Scorpia or like they try to convince him or something. So eventually the stuff that you're hoping for does happen. But when it comes to this Hitler guy, uh, Alex is not being swayed. Well, you know, they didn't need to make him exactly Hitler, you know, they, they, if you have the concept that he, he has to infiltrate these this, this, this private school and he's sent by a government agency who is like, like 90% evil, like the way they, they threaten his family and stuff. Right. Holy shit, they, they're so dumb. And then he goes to the school, and then you, you would think that, that, he would, that he would see, oh, well, I mean, I know how bad these guys are. Let's, let's see how bad these so-called actual villains are. And then, oh, <laughs> well, guess they're actually Hitler. Wow, how convenient. How, <laughs> how convenient that we don't have to, to, to lose a single brain cell thinking about what, what we should do. Let's just, let's just do the morally obvious thing. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty well, good. I guess while yeah. you're shitting on it, I should bring up the, the issues I had with the show because I do have a few. Uh, the first obvious one being the sound mixing is is so god awful, and I, I'm not some fucker who's complaining about sound mixing using my goddamn TV speakers and wondering why it sounds like shit. I have a pretty fucking expensive sound bar that is uh, uh, all set up for perfect sound. And, and it's just every five minutes I have to grab the remote and turn it up or down. Oh, no. Whoever mixed in the, the music, the music is consistently four times louder than any of the dialogue. I don't know how this is still a problem in 2020. Even my fucking YouTube videos have figured this shit out. Don't make the music way louder than everything else. And secondly, I think every single song that played in this show, I, I absolutely hated. 
I think it might have the worst soundtrack of any show I've ever watched. The theme song I thought was dog shit, and I skipped it every single time. I not the ten seconds of it. Oh no! It was it was at least forty five, dude. And it's did you like any of the music in this show when they go to parties? Well, the the is, music is dog shit. The thing is, I, I basically don't remember the music except for the theme song, which I thought was fine. So I guess mm. I guess it's forgettable. To to so yeah, maybe. Maybe it's fine. I, I don't know. Another issue I, I had is that uh, an obvious plot point for any James Bond-esque story is that before the mission, you got to go meet up with the Q character who gives you all of your little gadgets. And the Alex Ryder books have a lot of fun with this because he's a teenager. So they have to take things that a teenager would have and incorporate super spy gadgets into them. And in this show... The only thing they give him is like an iPad or iPod or an MP3 player or something. And they say, hey, if you if you go to the new kids on the block and click on that, uh, then it'll uh, send a, You can send us a, a secret message that they won't see. So, OK, that's kind of funny because, yeah, the uh, nobody's ever going to click on new kids on the block. So they'll never find out that it's uh, it's a device. But, is that a real band? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, it's it's pretty old. But. The problem is that's the only gadget they give him, and even in the book, I'm pretty sure they gave him a shit ton of more fun stuff. And then in the show, he never has reception, so it doesn't even fucking work. There, there are no gadgets. <laughs> yeah. That seems like a huge oversight. If you're doing a teenage James Bond TV show, you've got to give him cool, fun gadgets that a teenager would have, and he has to utilize them throughout the mission. And that nothing like that ever happens. I thought that was a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, honestly, I don't even get why people say, oh, it's the new James Bond. There's no gadgets, damn it. It's just a regular spy if there's no gadgets. Yeah. He surfs on a laundry board. <laughs> God damn it. But and, anyways, <laughs> I guess what you said earlier about James Bond being surpassed by by its by the things that came I, I wouldn't say it. surpassed. I would just say I, I appreciate the inspirations more than the original. Well, I, I only really like the inspirations if they have like a funny thing about it. Like the Kingman, the, the Kingsmen are are funny in some ways. Then you have Johnny English, which is I think my favorite one. And yeah, that's that one's funny. just that that one's great. I mean, I I don't know if there are any just normal spy movies that that even do the James Bond things other than those. And Austin Powers, of course, also hilarious. Is there any rival, any actual rival to James Bond? I mean, this one's just uh, like kids. So Mission I, I Impossible would be the main one. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Even though, yeah, does that have like more more than one character? I, I don't know if I've watched all of them. Uh, the, the, the Tom Cruise character would be the, I think his name's Ethan Hunt. I think that's the American James Bond. Doesn't he always work in a team though? I mean, a few times he has to, like, the, even his own team turns against him and he's framed uh -oh. for stuff and he has to go solo, so. Well, but he's not, like, the, the one spy he sent in by himself. He just ends up that way. Well, yeah, I, 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 I still think if you're going to compare apples to apples, I think Ethan Hunt and James Bond would be the closest bet. Yeah, probably. I, I guess I'm t what I'm saying is that there aren't aren't that many people that t just took the James Bond formula and, and ran with it. I guess James Bond is still fairly unique, and the only ones that really did it are the funny ones. The only ones that are actually amazing. Well, and the Alex Ryder novels, which is you know, because <laughs> James Bond started off as a series of novels, so I guess it makes sense that uh, Anthony Horowitz would follow in the tradition with his novels too. Well, I I guess we'll see if if they end up blowing up big time and they'll manage to rival James Bond so uh, far. Well, that's never going to happen. Like nothing's ever <laughs> going to be as big and legendary as James Bond. I just personally, from the James Bond movies I've seen, I I did not get as much enjoyment from them as I did from Kingsman or from the the books I read as a kid or any of that stuff. I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people think that they're phenomenal, but. They're really, really hit or miss, especially the the Daniel Craig movies. There's like two really oh, yeah. good ones and two that are complete fucking dog shit. It's so weird that they just keep changing the the actor who plays James Bond. That's it, it's just a, such a big divide for me. It feels like they're not even connected movies at that point, but I guess they keep going, and I guess there there's something to be recognized. So that's good. All right, I guess back to Alex Ryder. 
So well, now, now that like... I've said what I disliked about it, can you at least name a few things that you did like? Uh oh. <laughs> you didn't like any. How do you binge six hours of TV in one day and you hate the entire thing? Do you fucking hate yourself? <laughs> No, actually, I think it's. It, I, I actually would give it like a six out of ten, and I think it's it, it's suspenseful enough. It's just like I don't specifically like the characters, but I guess that that happens every once in a while that I watch a show where I don't like the characters, and I guess I have to deal with it. But I have some pretty big complaints that I haven't even talked about. That you like, haven't even example, said that, one that thing you like. So I think when they when they kidnap him and they beat him up. And it takes an entire fucking episode. And it's so obvious from the start that they're just like Testing the MI6 him. people that are trying to, to see if he's got the stuff to be a spy. And then they, they play it straight faced. Oh, who is these who is this new criminalized organization that's beating him up? What's going on? What's all this torture for? Excuse me, am I being tortured here? <laughs> Everyone must have seen this coming, right? It was so obvious that it was just the MI6 people, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's an interesting answer to what is one thing you liked about the show, but go ahead. You know, let it out, King. Well, I guess so. I don't know. I just like the general suspense of it. They, I guess the general, the fact that they actually tell a story throughout the episodes, you don't get that. In, in too many things like that. Usually they, they just have like Adventure of the Week kind of stuff. Right. At least they they follow through with the story. I guess <laughs> I guess that's that's the one thing I like about it. How about you? What what did you like about it so much? Oh, I I just I I had a lot of fun watching the entire thing. I like you said, there's a lot of suspenseful moments, and they they really they take full advantage of every uh, potential uh, suspenseful moment. Really, it, you think, oh, what we're gonna spend four or five full episodes at this fucking boarding school in the mountains? It's gonna get so boring and repetitive, and nothing's gonna happen. <laughs> but I think consistently, they're always upping the stakes, and things are getting more interesting. The mystery evolves. And uh, I, I just had a blast. I watched the whole thing in one day as well. Yeah, at least we watched it in one day. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. What do you think of, uh, and spoilers for anybody who cares, I don't know why you really would, because, I mean, it's an, it's an adaptation of some YA shit, but uh, there's a real sci-fi element to this plot, and I, I don't know, does James Bond usually go full, like, uh, science fiction sort of uh, creative? Uh, that, or well, do, I, I does does they, it stay more grounded in reality? I think they to some extent. I think they have clones and stuff. And maybe, well, I, I guess they have, like, that one guy who has the... <laughs> The iron teeth where he bites everything. Okay. He's like a, a big old Terminator guy. He, you know well, that guy? So the plot of this is that the, the big mustache Hitler loving guy, I guess, has made a bunch of clones of himself. And then they are they're studying these children who are at the school because they're going to replace them. And they, they eventually lock the kids up and they perform plastic surgery on the guy's clones to make them look and sound exactly like the kids. Obviously, you have to <laughs> suspend your disbelief a little bit because, I mean, it's absurd that they would even sound alike. I don't know how much vocal modification you can make on a person to make them sound exactly like someone else. But, uh, yeah, that's the plot. He wants to infiltrate all of these big wealthy families going, uh, pretending to be their children, and then kill off the the heads of the family and now he has you know domination over all these different industries that are billion dollar companies and uh, this is the plot that alex has to uncover and prevent and ultimately uh, after they save the day and all that uh, nobody realizes that they did make a clone of alex himself and then the final episode the plot is that the clone follows Alex home and starts fucking up his life. Did you, what, did that take you out of the oh, no. show? Cause I was like, okay, this is getting a little out of hand. Well, I already didn't like the, the kids and then, and we, ha we have to, and now there's two of angry them. At him. <laughs> yeah. The God, these him. characters suck. Just what I need is to double them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I, I guess he, he's mostly a blank slate, but I mean, he's annoying in some ways too, sure. But the, like his 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 friends and his 
posse i guess they 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 all get annoyed with him all all of a sudden and he's like what what did i do and of course nobody can talk about it. nobody's ever able to just talk about it. <laughs> so it takes them forever to figure it out yep. yeah it's i i guess that last episode was kind of annoying especially because I, mean, I thought the the hitler guy was at least somewhat entertaining but then the, the final <laughs> villain is is the guy himself oh no yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Well, he, he wasn't even supposed to be killed off, apparently, right? In the in the movies, uh, in in the books. Is the he, Hitler does guy. Does he come back? No, the the clone. Yeah, the the clone. Here's something weird. The, there is the the little plot about the clone in the book, um, but I, I think it's resolved like in one chapter. I think like he shows up, him and Alex fight, and then. Um, I don't remember who shows up to save the day, but like it's this thing. Oh, don't shoot me! Shoot him! No, he's the clone. And then they somehow figure out the real one. It takes maybe like what eight pages in the book, but this they expand on it for a full episode, which I thought was a little bit much. Evidently, uh, the girl that Alex has a crush on is this black girl, and evidently the clone calls her the N word. Because <laughs> then when <laughs> when she, what I assume so, because then when the real <laughs> Alex walks up and and she's like he's like hey what's up? She slaps him. In the face and says ah oh, that was the worst thing you could ever say to me and he's like what the fuck did i do <laughs> wow so, could perfect. you imagine if if a perfect clone of you showed up and started calling everybody <laughs> the n-word and then left and then you showed up and you didn't know what was going on damn it my my lifelong dream of having my clone to to do evil schemes with and now he's he's calling people the n-word damn it he's all right <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> no, my clone. I guess I shouldn't have been alt left. He had to complete the balance. Well, I mean, I'm fine with completing the balance. We'll just be in the middle. But then I, I think he's uncompromising evil. This one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, uh, that's pretty crazy. So, like, was there? What's your favorite episode? If you if you have one. Oh, uh, before I, that, I, I, I forgot my, to my least favorite one. <laughs> I forgot to elaborate on the clone thing. Um, the Stormbreaker movie that came out in like 2007 or 8, it was based on the first book, but very bizarrely, after they complete the plot of the first book, they throw in this fucking clone shit as well. Oh, no. And the first movie ends with a clone of Alex fighting Alex. I'm like, what the fuck? That's from the other book. This isn't even relevant. <laughs> what is happening? So they, How would they even make the second movie then? That doesn't make any sense. They never made the second movie because the first one <laughs> well, was couldn't. a big flop. Like, they, yeah. I don't know what they were thinking. That was a huge fucking mistake. Uh, but yeah, what was your question? So do you have a favorite episode? No, no, because they, I mean, the, the storyline just goes from episode to episode so well that I don't really distinguish them as individual episodes. Why, did you? No, I just had a least favorite, the second one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, if you so, know that he's being tested to see if he would, like, under torture, if he would give up uh, all the spy secrets, yeah, I can see why you'd be annoyed when that goes on for 20 minutes. I mean, surely you knew it too, right? I mean, I guess you would have. Yeah, yeah, I, I had a pretty good idea. It's such an obvious trope. Holy shit, it's such a waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the same thing with them turning evil. That one took, I mean, them being evil clones, that one was taking forever too, I guess. But at, at the same out. time, I, I appreciate uh, show, don't tell in storytelling. So it is nice that we can actually see early on that he has been trained by his uncle to uh, survive torture and like he has methods for coping with, if, if they're blasting with loud sound, he can just zone it out and sing his own music. And I, I think it's nice that we see that because later on in the show, he does get tortured by the actual bad guys, and uh, we get we already know oh he he can handle this, and and we get to see him go through it. So it doesn't just like oh, great, when he's doing all torture. these magical things, <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're pulling a rabbit out of their ass. It's more of oh yeah, it's been established that he has these skills, and now we get to see them in the field. So how did you think his his escape worked out? Do you think that one was believable? No. The way he got away from I, I think they I think they fucked this one up. One of the big ideas was, hey, this is a remote location in the middle of the mountains. It's freezing cold temperatures, and you're 20 miles away from the nearest city. So if you try to run away from this school, 
you're going to freeze to death and die, or we're going to catch you on a snowmobile and just fucking kill you. And th there are several characters who escape from the school. I, I guess, I mean, Alex and his clone escape from the school and make it to civilization seemingly within less than an hour. And he's not even wearing a fucking hat. Like, I thought he was supposed to freeze to death. The clone literally just walks from the school to the nearest uh, uh, public road. I thought I thought you were supposed to freeze and die. How are all these people doing this? Seems like a big well, uh, over overthought or overlook. I mean, s since I live in in the in the mountains, obviously it's survivable. You just need a coat. So the 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 clone would have probably had a coat. I don't know that if if he didn't have a coat, it might have been harder. But I mean, you could probably walk for a good long while before you pass out from hypodermia. You know? Yeah, I, mean, I, I not, just feel like instant kill. The, the stakes are a lot higher the more isolated and hopeless the character is. When, when Alex is stuck in this school and it seems like there is no escape and his transponder MP3 player isn't working so he, he can't even contact them for help, like that's real isolation and that's that's a lot of where the stakes come from. Alex is really in this all alone and he has to figure this shit out on his own and he there's no way to call for help. But then <laughs> the stakes of, oh, yeah, if you if you leave this school, you will die. Well, he, he just uh, turns a an ironing board into a snowboard and evidently skis downhill for, what, 10 minutes and that covers the 20-mile trek? Yeah, I don't think so. I think they kind of screwed the pooch a little bit. Well, I guess he went really fast, then. Evidently. Yeah, he, sh he should have been extracted in some way. I mean, what the fuck were the spies doing in this time? Were they not trying to reach out to him or something? Jesus. It's pretty weird. They, you'd think they'd be like camping out somewhere, ready to pick him up, have some kind of extraction point for him. Yeah, it's pre pretty crazy. So, uh, who is that person that helped him fake his death, anyways? I oh, that was his handler. Already. Oh, so he did manage to get to her. Okay. I I, th I don't remember specifically, but um, she she was warned i think by jack or somebody that uh, he alex was in trouble and then that would just so happen to be when he was escaping anyway so when the ambulance came to get him after he was hit by a truck um she was able to you know get involved with that and help him fake his death ah pretty convenient so he didn't actually set that up in any way he just lucked out great <laughs> figures yeah well, so how did you like the feeling that he that he was like completely outmatched by the bad guys for most of it? Did you did you think that was realistic that he that he would be able to make the difference on who would win in the end? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I thought it was pretty well executed and that the stakes were consistently high. And you know, he we we see him he has to team up with the other troubled teens to. Uh, and, and they have to do little schemes to figure out like the, the key code on all the doors so that they can get into places that they're not supposed to and all these things. So uh, as far as uh, Alex versus the world, I think the, the progression of him figuring things out and having to accomplish all these little goals along the way, uh, it, it made for a, a really fun viewing experience, I think. Well, that's good. I guess I'm looking forward to, to season two. I mean, surely these kids can only get less annoying over time, right? There, there's, I think actually... like the, the six or the se No, those kids are not in the other books, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, good. Well, I mean, the, the kids from the school are probably not in the book either, so who's, who's going to be in the other books? Is it just like spy stuff that's unrelated to, to school stuff? I, I would imagine every season is going to cover a different book, and these... These books do all sorts of different stuff. There's, a, I think the sixth one is called Archangel, where a guy creates a space hotel. So Alex actually goes to the space hotel and he has to, like, fight bad guys in zero gravity and it's really cool. Well, I can't wait for that one. That one sounds way more interesting. Maybe there's more grown-ups there, too, not just kids. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm pretty positive for the future of the show then. I'm wondering if... I hope this is successful and that they make more, but uh, I, I have no idea. Evidently, this came out like six months ago, and now it's just now hitting oh, no. Amazon. Did you see it was produced by IMDb? 
the Internet Movie Database is now making TV shows. I, I was like, what the fuck is it going is? on? That, that's who it's made it. Crazy. IMDb made this show. Well, why does IMDb then say that it came out in June? Did anyone see it in June? I see the, there's reviews from it on from June. I, I guess the I, maybe it released on all of it came out. I, I, maybe they released it on the IMDb platform and realized <laughs> nobody was watching it, so they <laughs> sold it to Amazon. Oh no! We, we could have gone on there and watched it all along. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't even know it existed until a couple days ago. Damn. Guess you don't go to IMDb enough. <laughs> <laughs> never. I never go there. Are you sure it's by them? That's crazy. <laughs> I know. No, I'm it's I'm 100% certain and yeah, it is crazy. Why are they trying to enter the streaming game? Uh, the show is pretty good. I think the cinematography <laughs> especially was really impressive. There are a lot of really beautiful symmetrical shots. Uh, like a shit ton of them. I was I was really impressed by that, and I was thinking, how did IMDb make something that looks like a real film? Well, I guess to me, I I just have to say it. It seemed kind of too dark, but maybe maybe I. It's just because I generally have my monitor on pretty dark, so it probably could have been looking better. I guess if it had been less dark. What, yeah, I didn't what, think it was dark. I, my the brightness on my TV is at like fifty five, and it's it looked pretty good to me. Oh well, I mean everything else is I guess fine darkness wise. Maybe I just. Did you think it was colorful and stuff? Damn. Yeah, you might have had the same problem I had when I the first time I saw Thor Ragnarok in the theaters. The 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 projector <laughs> oh, no. fucked up and like the entire movie it, it looked like a, a Zack Snyder film. It was like very <laughs> kind of dark and like gray and beige and I was thinking, "What the fuck? This movie's kind of ugly." And then I find out it's the most colorful, bright Marvel movie of all time, and I'm thinking, "Wow, I got fucking robbed. My theater fucked up." <laughs> Well, damn, I mean, I guess it's possible. Damn. Well, well, I guess it could have been much more beautiful. What a shame. <laughs> All right, Florian, let's wrap this up. Did you? What did you think of... Uh, or what are your final thoughts on Alex Ryder and Is It Kino? Dun, dun, dun. Well, it's not for me. I guess if you like Spy Kids or something like that, then <laughs> it's, it's, it's Kino it's, for it's, you. It's, it's way more serious <laughs> than fucking Spy Kids. Come on, give it some credit. <laughs> How is it? You're not a fan of Spy Kids? Spy Kids I is... I've... I think Spy Kids is definitely for kids, and I, I can <laughs> enjoy it for that, but this seems a little more adult. Um, I, I think, especially since the book, I read it in middle school, this seems like maybe more uh, older teens to young adults might like it. I guess it's pretty weird that they have, like pretty significant violence and shit but then the, the, the characters are still kids what, what age is this supposed to be for anyways so the alex Ryder character is supposed to be 14 but i i feel like they aged him up in the show because he seemed way more like a 16 or 17 year old if he was supposed to be 14 then uh something's not right because nobody in this show looks 14 but, but the audience, what age should they be? Uh, well, I mean, it's rated PG-13, so I guess the same wow. audience as, you know, any Marvel movie. Well, I guess that makes sense. I guess it really is for younger people then, for me in this case. Oh, well. I mean, James Bond is for old men like you, and Alex Ryder and Kingsman <laughs> are for the, the Zoomers like me. Yeah, until the new James Bond, and then it's for colored women so i guess can't wait for that one did you hear wait, that did, did i come out yet I no no they're saying uh that no time to die the new james bond that was supposed to come out i think in march um they're getting so desperate to release it that they're thinking of selling it to netflix and that it won't even go to theaters which <laughs> i think is crazy well i'd be all for that if I can bring it all directly to the streaming services please <laughs> yeah i just i hope that since the Daniel Craig Bond movies are half good and half bad, I really hope this is one of the good ones because uh, otherwise, yeah, if, if they're going to replace Daniel Craig after this one, I think the franchise might be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, I guess we'll see. So I guess you think it's Kino then? What are your final thoughts? I thought it's one of the few adaptations that surpasses the original. I thought this uh, eight, or eight episodes of TV 
expanded on the book in a way that enhanced it and made it better. And I, it's very rare that you get something like that. And it has me hopeful that we get to see the other books ad, uh, adapted in the same long season format. And maybe they'll learn a lesson and do it with Harry Potter on Netflix in like five to ten years. I think that would be really cool. Wasn't that supposed to happen at some point anyway, so there'd be a Harry Potter series? How is it taking so long well, for that to happen? I think it's it's a little too soon since the movies did just end, what, eight years ago or so? Well, maybe, maybe they long. just want a little more time between. It makes sense. I mean, it's not like that many people are still watching the movies, I guess. I mean, like every once in a while, maybe, but not like on a grand scale. Yeah, it's probably safe and to release now. Even if people are watching the movies, they would be hyped as fuck to see a full season of television for each book. So, yeah, they're they're sitting on a gold mine. I don't know why they're wasting their time making these fantastic beast movies and then oh fi God, firing. They, they fire Johnny Depp <laughs> for no reason. Uh, well, why did they fire? <laughs> because he lost a court case uh, about whether or not he was. A domestic abuser he's saying that he's not one and that in fact amber heard was domestically abusing him and then there's a bunch of evidence that supports his story but then some court in britain said no no fuck you you probably did it we don't have evidence but we're just gonna say you <laughs> oh, probably shit. did it and now he's getting fired from every movie from every movie what the hell yeah, they're saying that johnny depp's career is done <laughs> jesus yeah. Well, I guess I guess that Poor could man. happen. I guess I guess we'll have to wait for like ten years, and then he comes back playing Santa, a really really fat Santa. Or he he can play Snape. Let's get him in there. <laughs> oh my god, that would be. Well, I guess it wouldn't work if he's already in the universe. So no. Uh, no, they fired him. Fuck it. But he'd have to be Grindelwald. Now this will no. be a new canon because it's. I think the Grindelwald shit is canon to the, the Harry Potter movies, but if you're going to do a, a TV show version, you can just, you know, if we can cast Harry as Snape, then why not cast fucking Grindelwald? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But Man, how are those, those Fantastic Beast movies going to be any good without Grindelwald being Johnny Depp? Holy shit. I mean, evidently like... they're dog shit even with him in them. I haven't seen them, but they, <laughs> they have pretty low scores on Rotten Tomatoes, and I've heard a lot of... A lot of the critics yeah. I trust said that it was a clusterfuck, horrible movie. Yeah, they're pretty mediocre. I mean, I guess I like the fact that they had Grindelwald, who is like essentially a Nazi, and then in the end we finally see the big reveal, and he's Johnny Depp. Were and you disappointed that, been... that the main character didn't consider joining the Nazis at some point, and you thought, oh, this is so unrealistic, why didn't the protagonist consider <laughs> joining the Nazis? I can't relate to this at all. Well, I mean, it's that's completely different, because it, there's like lots of wizards that join the Nazis. In fact, the whole wizarding world is is divided between fascist wizards and anti-fascist wizards. It, it it makes. I I mean, it's pretty interesting. I guess. I guess the fact that that Harry Potter is just like caught. <laughs> he, he's just like born into this anti-fascist family. So I guess that's his his choice made for him. Well, no, actually, he made that choice pretty early on. No, but I guess I don't know. I don't remember if. If Fantastic Beast guy may ever had that choice, hmm, damn. But yeah, he would have been great as the main villain for the next one, like front and center. But I guess, I guess I'll still watch it. I guess I'll see what they, what monstrosity they'll do without Johnny Depp. Yeah, it'll be uh, interesting. Maybe he just takes another polyjuice potion. Who knows? No, oh, yeah, I guess so. How convenient. <laughs> Well, hey, let's talk about future Kino, because a, a new Vince Vaughn horror comedy film called Freaky just came out, and it's getting pretty good reviews, so I was thinking of going to see that today, and if you have access to it, maybe we can Kino that next. Yeah, can't wait. Sounds pretty interesting. Okay, and, well, and, hey, uh, for, for that's another Is It Kino. Florian, where can people find you online? Yeah, everyone check out the GameSquid YouTube channel. Everyone must watch the Simeon Jimmy vs. Trump cartoon. Come on, guys. Get that stuff up there. Get the views in there. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the views will go up pretty quick because I'm going uh -oh. to advertise it in my next video that will hopefully be coming out tomorrow. So ho hopefully we'll get you up above a 1,000 views. 
<laughs> finally. <laughs> It'll, ex- it'll add exactly 300 views, finally. <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the most I can provide, is 300 <laughs> views on any given video. That's my superpower. <laughs> yep. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. Bye.